Week 7, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers finally break their three-game losing streak and beat the Cleveland Browns 26-23 to in a frustrating overtime game. Now, I'm not going to be super excited about this game because I think it was absolutely un acceptable the way the Bucs played, the way this game played out. I think Cleveland is a team that we should be able to beat easily and not really struggle with throughout the game. To be honest, Cleveland handed us that game with all those penalties. I feel like in third down situations, Cleveland gave us a bunch of first downs. We really kind of, we were giving this game away to them and they just didn't want it and gave it right back to us. There's nothing really exciting about this game, nothing that stands out to me. Overall, a sloppy game. I really felt that both teams deserved to lose. I didn't think a tie would be acceptable. I didn't think we deserved to win at all because if we can barely beat Cleveland at home, then what are we going to do next week when we go to Cincinnati? You know what I'm saying? Like, it was really unacceptable. I have a lot of gripes about this game. Picking some winners was kind of a stretch, and really, I'm not that excited about those winners. So, you know, it is what it is. I know our defense in the first half played really well, but in the second half, you know, I'm going to get into that when I talk about the winners and losers. Before I get into all of that, if you are new here, make sure you click the subscribe button down below. Like this video, comment. Let's have a conversation going. Buck Nation, let's get up in here. Let's get this dialogue going and let's see what's going on with these Bucks because it is a scary season. I don't know what's going on. We start out the season looking unstoppable, then now we're looking very beatable and we're struggling to win games. So we really need to turn it around. I don't know what needs to change, but let's have a conversation about it and try to, I don't know, figure it out even though we're not coaches and we really don't have decisions in that. But getting into the winners of the game, the first group of winners in this game I would give to our pass rush. Our pass rush finally showed up and ironically, without Gerald McCoy. I know a lot of people say when Gerald McCoy is in there, the pass rush doesn't do that well. And when he's out, we seem to get sacks, which happened to be the case. We got four sacks this game, I want to say. We picked Nassib up from Cleveland. He got us two sacks. I think JPP got one maybe. I don't remember exactly. I know Will Golston did, but four sacks. I don't think we've had any game this season where we had four. And it really begs the question, is Gerald McCoy a player that we need to have on our team? Is he someone we can trade out for two or three players or two or three draft picks and, you know, clear up that cap space? And I think last week when Gerald McCoy was out, we started applying more pressure. So I don't know what it is. Everyone always says he attracts double teams. It opens up the edge rush. It opens up the game for him now that we have JPP, and it seems like Gerald McCoy has been on the decline for the last few years. So shout out to the pass rush. I don't know what happened. Maybe it is Mark Duffner coming in and changing the play calling a little bit. Maybe the firing of Mike Smith kind of lit a fire under the players and they started balling out. I don't know, but whatever it is, it doesn't matter. The pass rush showed up today. They applied a lot of pressure. There was a couple plays where they grabbed Baker, but he got out of it somehow. So they applied a lot of pressure more than I'm used to seeing. So shout out to the pass rush. The second winner of this game, I'd have to say, is Jameis Winston. He completed 32 of 50. 52 passes, 365 yards, zero touchdowns, one interception, and one rushing touchdown. But the reason I give it to Jameis is because for the most part, I want to say 95% of the game, he was playing with really great decision making. I haven't seen the Jameis from the last few seasons where he's taken a lot of risks. Yeah, he threw that first pick, which wasn't a bad decision. It was just a bad throw because if Jameis threw it a little bit higher and OJ Howard got it, it would have been a touchdown. It was just a bad throw. That second one in overtime was unacceptable. He didn't see the linebacker underneath and just threw it straight to the linebacker. So that one is unacceptable. But I feel like since the Chicago game when he played in the second half and then last week and this week, his decision making has gotten a lot better. He's tucking the ball. He's running a lot more. He's not throwing into double and triple coverage like he's used to. He's taking the check down. So I think that's really good progression. You can see the maturation from him. He's still taking sacks when he's not supposed to. But overall, good decision making in my opinion. He had a rushing touchdown, which was good to see him get one. I don't think he had one since the second year of his career, I think. I don't think he had one last year. Yeah, I'm not really sure, but it's good to see him finally get one again. But overall, his decision making, in my opinion, has gotten a lot better. There's obviously room for improvement, but it looks good compared to what it has been. The third winner of the game is the run game. I'm pretty sure we cleared 100 yards because I know Jameis alone had like 55 to 60 yards. We had three rushing touchdowns. We hadn't had a rushing touchdown all season except Ryan Fitzpatrick's rush in week one. But we had the end round of Deshaun Jackson. We had Rojo finally got a touchdown. He finally got some good touches in and looked pretty explosive, to be honest. Anytime he got a little bit of a crease, he picked up yards pretty easily and then Jameis with that rush so three rushing touchdowns when we've only had like one all season it's a big improvement and it actually makes our offense more dynamic because inside the 10 inside the five a lot of teams know we're just going to throw but now that we can actually score in the red zone on the ground it's going to make teams have to figure out what to do because we have the pass catchers and now they got to respect the run now going into the losers of the game the first 
loser of the game would be the defense as a whole. I know the defense in the first half played well, but in the second half, there was receivers running wide open. It kind of got back into what we were seeing with Mike Smith. Now, I think part of it has to do with Quan Alexander because when he was in and he wasn't injured, Mark Duffner had him and Levante looking amazing. Quan Alexander was running around, tackles, pass breakups. He looked really good in coverage. He didn't look like a liability, and Levante David was balling out in the end of that first half when he hit Baker Mayfield, and Baker Mayfield fumbled it out before the first down. That was ridiculous because it looked like Baker was going to get that first down and they were going to score before the half, but somehow Levante punched it out and it went backwards. But once Quan Alexander went out, I know Quan is like the quarterback of the defense and he's making all the calls and everything, but once he went out, I don't think Adarius Taylor is as good at that. I don't, I'm not really sure to be honest, but once he went out, the defense really declined and they were giving up a lot of yards. I know Baker still didn't throw for like 300, 400 yards, but there was players wide open in the middle of the field. It seemed like in the second half, we couldn't stop Cleveland at all, especially in the fourth quarter. But luckily the defense came together in overtime. After that first drive in overtime, I don't think Cleveland got another first down. So that is good. It's an improvement from what it was with Mike Smith, but we could have put the game away a lot earlier. The second loser of the game I have to give to Dirk Cutter because of his decision making. At the end of the game, we had the ball at the Cleveland 25 yard line. We had 45 seconds left and three timeouts. Perfect opportunity to try to get more yards, hopefully score a touchdown and put the game out of reach, or at least getting closer and making a much easier field goal. Instead, Dirk Cutter decided to run the ball and then burn time, and then run with Jameis to the right side to put Catanzaro in a position where he can make a game-winning field goal. As you know, Catanzaro missed the field goal, and at one point in overtime, it looked like we were going to lose and we couldn't stop Cleveland at all. But Dirk Cutter has to know we have the biggest and best weapons in the NFL on the receiving end. Take some shots, get a touchdown, end the game, and put it out. He's not playing to win. He's playing not to lose, and that is hurting us. It's like the millionth time in the last few seasons we've had to rely on field goal kicking because Dirk doesn't want to just end the game at once. It's kind of reminding me of the last season that last game against the Saints where Dirk wanted an out route so we can get an easier field goal and Jameis just said F it threw that ball to Godwin, just went against what Dirk Cutter wanted and won the game. And the final loser of the game, I'm sure a lot of you know, is Catanzaro. He needs to go. He needs to get cut. We need to find a new kicker. At this point, it doesn't even matter. He's completely unreliable. And honestly, he's worse than Robert Aguayo. I feel like Aguayo wasn't missing too many inside the 40. It was all the kicks outside of 40 where he was really sucking it up. But Catanzaro is not even reliable inside the 40. And again, the missed extra point in the first half really hurt us because it let Cleveland tie the game at the end. Had he made the extra point, Cleveland would have had to go for two. And you know, if they don't get it, we win the game. But again, a missed extra point really puts us in a bad position where we could just end the game, but rather we have to fight to the final second. Unacceptable. And then the game winning field goal that's 40 yards. I already talked about Dirk's decision making, but I mean, who didn't expect that to miss? I didn't feel like it was an automatic kick. I was nervous and I was like, watch him miss it. And of course he missed it. And in overtime, that 59 yard kick really gave me so much anxiety. I think his career long was 60. And after missing that 40 yard line, I was like, please, please just get it in. He did. Great for him, great for his confidence, great for the team to come out with a win, although it was too close for comfort, but I still think he has to go. That 59 yard kick does not change the fact that he's not a reliable option for us because again, that extra point if he made it changes the outcome of the game or the game winning field goal at the end of the fourth. Oh, Canzaro, you gotta go. I don't know what it is. Our kicking game has been horrible since we've gotten rid of Matt Bryant. When we had Connor Barth, it was somewhat reliable, but then he got hurt playing basketball, and since then it's been downhill. I don't know what we gotta do. We gotta figure out a kicker. We need to find out what's going on. Again, I said last week maybe we should get a kicker from overseas, and hopefully he ends up being better. I don't know, but we gotta figure it out. Prediction time for next week. We are playing at Cincinnati. This is one of the games where I don't feel confident at all. I don't think we can pull out a win. I think we're gonna lose. Cincinnati on offense has been ridiculous. They've been scoring a lot of points. Their offense looks really good. I'm not really aware of their defense as much, but I don't see us really coming out there. Unless we can score 35 plus points, I don't see us winning. And the way we're looking right now, Deshaun Jackson is not really getting involved. I don't know what it is between Jameis and Deshaun. It seems like when Jameis is playing, Deshaun's energy is low. I don't know. He doesn't seem excited. When Fitzpatrick was in, he was like hype. He had a lot of swag and energy. But now that Jameis is back, he's like, it's just a weird vibe I'm getting from Deshaun. But I don't know. Cincinnati, I think they're going to beat us. I think it's going to be a higher scoring game. I think they're going to beat us like 38, 31, maybe. I don't know. I don't like predicting points. I think this game is going to go into the 30s, and I think Cincinnati pulls it off and wins. I think it's a game where even though our defense looked a little bit improved, we were playing Cleveland and Baker. They have really no viable receiving options outside of Jarvis Landry. Their tight end, Nagoku, I think that's how you say his name, is pretty solid, but they traded Carlos Hyde, so they didn't come in with as much firepower as they've normally had. So, of course, we're supposed to kind of shut them down, but Cincinnati's a whole nother beast. Hopefully, we can pull it off, but I'm not really that confident about it. I think we go three and four 
after next week's game and uh, we go from there. So thank you for tuning into my reaction. Once again, if you are new here, click the subscribe button, like and comment. Let's hold this team accountable because the product they're putting on the field is completely unacceptable. We know they can play better than they have been. Dirk Cutter needs to look in the mirror and figure out what he needs to do to become a little more aggressive because we have a very, very unreliable kicker. He hasn't shown us that he could be reliable, but for some reason we keep relying on him to win games. Put it in your offense. You have the number two passing offense in the league and I think it's probably going to remain that after this week. Go for the jugular. Don't keep like, play to win. Don't play not to lose. But yeah, I can keep ranting. So yeah, Buck Nation, we up in here. Let's go. Tampa Bay, let's get it. Next week against Cincinnati, let's try to pull off this W. And thank you to everybody in Buck Nation who's tuned in. I am out. Our offense tough, our defense rough. Go Bucks. Go Bucks. Ain't no other team stopping us. Go Bucks. Go Bucks.